Hello friends, welcome to Path Chat and Shai. I'm a pathologist based in Riyadh with an interest in lymphoma and lung pathology. This channel is all about sharing knowledge and learning together. So grab the beverage of your choice. I'm with Shai and let's dive into today's case. Okay, friends, Assalamu alaikum. Let's start with our first case. So our patient is a 64-year-old male uh, with an underlying interstitial lung disease. He was referred uh, for lung transplant and found to have abdominal lymphadenopathy. The PET scan showed FDG avid uh, retroperitoneal soft tissue mass, which was worrisome for lymphoma. Uh, so needle core biopsies were performed from this uh, mass, and you can see here they give us a good uh, core biopsies, and uh, the cores are very blue, so most likely lymphoid uh, cells. And as you can see, most of the core uh, consists of a background of reactive-looking land uh, lymphoid cells. There are some patent sinuses uh, over here. Let's go around. And then if you look closer, you start seeing aggregates of these larger cells. They are rare and they are sneaky. Um, so some of them have this clear cytoplasm, others have a moderate amount of eosinophilic cytoplasm around them, uh, inclusion like uh, one single nucleoli or multiple nucleoli. So there is a cl cluster over here and then a few scattered uh, similar large atypical cells over here, but hyperchromatic with uh, vesicular chromatin um, in this area. Uh, let's look at the other block as well. So it shows you the background of reactive uh, lymphoid cells. You have patent sinuses. So though you don't see reactive germinal centers, but uh, you have these uh, sinuses and uh, the bland um, reactive looking lymphoid cells in the background. But as you go along the lymphoid, the needle core, again, you see aggregate of these typical large, uh, what seem to be lymphoid cells here. They seem to be uh, within the sinuses or giving the impression of that they might be in the sinuses. You have clear cytoplasm or you have this eccentrically placed nuclei with plasma cytoid appearance, a large cell with prominent nucleoli, hyperchromasia, so as we saw in the scanned images, again, the large scattered cells with prominent nucleoli. And then I have a couple of images showing and illustrating the same. Uh, some of them looked like reed sternberg like cells with binucleation and prominent nucleoli. Over here, they seem to be aggregating more or, or uh, infiltrating within the sinuses. Really giving I me mean, a Reed Stenberg like appearance. Some of them look mummified or immunoblast even. So large cells with promonuclei. So immunoblast or Reed Stenberg like cell. Uh, over here they are eccentrically placed. So hmm, could they be plasma plastic uh, uh, cells here? Very a similar or suggestive of a Reed Sternberg like cell. So the differential diagnosis at this point, uh, some things that I definitely wanted to rule out would be uh, a Hodgkin lymphoma. Could it be an anaplastic large cell lymphoma, given that those the large cells within the sinuses or perhaps something else? So started with a general panel, uh, CD45, CD3, CD20 were all negative, and CD15 was also negative. Uh, so Next, uh, CD30, as you can see here, CD30 was positive and it was positive in all the clusters of uh, the large uh, cells. But uh, if we were to consider Hodgkin, PAX5 was negative, Fasin was negative, we like to use Fasin in our practice, ALK1 was negative, and CD138 
as well as CD38 were all negative. So now we started thinking, could it be something else other than Hodgkin? Um, all the T-cell markers that we performed, CD43, 5, 4, 8, 2, 7, were also negative. So additional markers performed, so Eber was positive. Now we have uh, this atypical uh, lymphoid cells with immunoblastic slash um, Hodgkin-like morphology of cells with CD30 and Eber positivity, but a negative for 45, 23, 15, Fasin, and ALK. EMA was interesting interestingly positive in those cells. So once the EMA was positive, I threw in a MUM1. MUM1 was also positive. Um, and after uh, seeing the MUM1, the EMA, I did a HHV8, which turned out to be positive. So this is very nicely positive in the cluster of these atypical cells. And then also over here, the, this was the other cluster, which also showed nice positivity. And maybe you have this small uh, atrophic germinal center next to it. Maybe, maybe not. But anyhow, HHV8 was strongly positive. So now, uh, next, I wanted to see if these large cells are within a germinal center or not. And I performed a CD21. As you can see here, CD21 over here, it is encircling and meshing the atypical uh, large uh, immunoblast-like uh, cells over here again. So the large cells are um, encircled by the follicular dendritic meshwork. So considering all the findings of these scattered large immunoblast-like slash plasma plastic-like lymphoid cells, CD30 faint patchy positivity, uh, MOM1 positive, um, the co-expression of EBV and uh, HHV8, uh, the most likely differential diagnosis was HHV8 positive germinotrophic lymphoproliferative disorder. Uh, so this is a rare disease. And when you have lesions with HHV positive, uh, V8 positive, uh, cells, there are a couple of differentials that you would like to consider. Uh, so uh, HHV8 associated B cell lymphoproliferative disorders include the associated uh, multiple um, multicentric Kasselman disease or primary fusion lymphoma, uh, HHV8 associated diffuse large B cell lymphoma, and the HHV8 positive germinotropic lymphoproliferative disorder. Uh, so all of these four differentials, the clinical context and uh, the history of immunosuppression is extremely important. Um, so in all of the three other differentials, the patients are usually immunocompromised, uh, either HIV or post-transplant. Uh, they present with generalized lymphadenopathy as opposed to the germinotropic lymphoproliferative disorder presents with a localized lesion, such as uh, just like our patient. And now once uh, I was considering this differential diagnosis, I called our physician, discussed the patient with him, and the patient is immunocompetent. He's uh, otherwise asymptomatic other than his lung uh, symptoms, and uh, his HIV screening is negative. The morphology can overlap, the immunohistochemical stains can overlap, uh, but when you have a lesion with HHV8 and EBV, there are two main differentials. So the primary fusion lymphoma and the HHV8 positive germinotropic lymphopositive disorder. Um, the key differential, uh, differentiating factors here, as I mentioned, would be the generalized versus localized lymphadenopathy, the immunocompromised versus immunocompetent, um, a background, uh, which would be the key uh, for you uh, to differentiate both lesions clinically. Then morphologically, you have the same immunoblastic or plasmablastic uh, lymphoid cells. They might uh, resemble Hodgkin cells, as we saw here. But importantly, the germinotropic lymphoprofter disorder um, uh, present with a retained lymph node architecture. So since these were needle cores, 
core and I couldn't see the rest of the architecture. However, the CD21 is quite helpful in uh, demonstrating that the atypical large lymphoid cells are indeed infiltrating or um, uh, involving the uh, germinal centers and the follicodendritic meshwork is encircling uh, those uh, atypical uh, HHV8 positive lymphoid cells. So friends, that was our case for today. I hope you found it insightful and don't forget uh, to stay curious, keep learning and enjoy your shy. Until next time, everybody, take care.